Welcome back. We're talking with Congressman Jim Costa, Senator Dave Cogdill, and Assemblymember Juana Rangula. The City of Bell's salary and pension benefits scandal, where the city manager was claiming a $600,000 pension on an $800,000 a year salary, has prompted widespread outrage and calls for limits on the salaries and pensions of government officials. While such salaries and pensions are clearly not the norm, the unfunded pension and retiree health liabilities for teachers and state employees now total about $136 billion. So, uh, Senator Member Rambula, the Bell scandal is going to be, it seems to be both a boon and a distraction on pension reform, since some are going to be focusing on these rare egregious problems rather than tackling the big pension issues that impact far more people. Um, how do you think this issue is going to get resolved in the legislature? Well, the, the situation in Bell needs to be dealt with uh, regardless of what, whatever else happens. But at the state level, we have a situation where promises were made uh, to state workers and the money to pay for those promises has not been coming in in a sufficient amount uh, to, to pay for those promises. So some changes do have to be made. We have to find a way to make some changes in the retirement age, uh, probably look at increasing contribution levels by employees and employers, mm -hmm. uh, delaying retirement, changing uh, some of the uh, loopholes that, that have allowed the uh, bell situation. It's kind of interesting that pensions in California, a lot of them, at least they have been looking at one year salary as the basis for the pension. And in the private sector, it's typically three years average. So you can't spike your, your salary in one year to get a more generous pension. And that's certainly something, that uh, a reform that people are looking at, I would assume? That has to be part of the overall solution. Uh, we need to bring uh, the liabilities of the pension system in balance with the revenues that are coming in. You know, uh, Senator Cogdill, uh, CalPERS, the California Public Employees Retirement System, closed out uh, the 2009-10 fiscal year with a 13.3 percent return. That's a pretty good return. That's a significant improvement from last year where they lost 23.4 percent. So do we just need to be patient and let the investments bail us out of this problem? No, I think we've got to go beyond that, certainly. And, and Juan uh, touched on it and a lot of the reforms that the governor was able to achieve this year dealt with the whole uh, issue of um, uh, employee contributions being increased, of retirement age being increased, of again going to a three-year average uh, highest salary uh, instead of just a single year, and also looking at certainly what's happened in some of the, the uh, uh, local governments where they've allowed people to bring in things like unused sick leave, vacation, uniform allowances into that final year. That so people are gaming spiked. the system. They have certainly. I don't think anybody can uh, call it any other way. Those things have to be dealt with long term. Um, I think the, the contractual agreements uh, are what they are and we'll have to honor those but moving forward we do have to s establish a whole new paradigm. And, well, and uh, Let me ask you a question. Meg Whitman when she was running for governor took public safety pensions off the table. Now some people say that the abuse of public safety disability pensions uh, is the forgotten child in the pension debate. Uh, since 1999 police and firefighters have been able to retire as early as age 50 with 90 percent of their paychecks for their life. Do we need to address this issue? I think so, definitely. Again, I think those, that age needs to be increased. I think, uh, again, the contributions have to be increased on the employee side. And also, I, I think we've got to look at the whole uh, issue as it relates to um, uh, you know, pension systems, retirement systems in general, when they were originally established and why and, and uh, you know, what uh, we were looking at in the way of life expectancies and this type of thing at that point in time and realize that we all live longer now and uh, probably will need to work uh, a little bit longer than we have in the past. You know, it's interesting. I may have lost part of our audience when we were talking about pension reform because it sounds so dry, but the reality is the liabilities are astronomical. Yeah. Um, a question for you, uh, Senator Member Arambula. Uh, retiree health liabilities also continue to grow. Again, a lot of places, they're unfunded. What would you like to see done to reform retiree health care? I would like to see local governments and other municipalities and government entities uh, begin to set aside money uh, to pay for those promises. I if you make a promise, you have to find a way to fund it. And uh, up to now, it's been easy to make promises uh, of, of certain things that, that will happen in the future without doing the hard work of setting the money aside. I've tried to do that in the past. 
Uh, I've gotten my licking for, for attempting to do that. It's a very controversial issue with some of the public sector unions. Um, but if we're going to keep a funded system for those people, teachers and, and others, uh, who really make modest salaries, we have to make sure that we honor our promise by making sure that the money is there when they need it. Okay, well, when we come back, we'll discuss the $25 billion question, how to balance the state budget that is seriously out of whack. That conversation when we return. This is The Matter Report.